Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Open Textbook Network Summit. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is the session on engaging faculty. My name is David Ernst. I'm the Executive Director at the Open Textbook Network. Um, if you're not familiar with the Open Textbook Network, we're a community of higher education organizations that are working together to make education more equitable and accessible and affordable through open education. You can learn, learn more about us at open.umn.edu slash OTM. I will be serving as a facilitator for today's session, and I'm joined by Barb Thies, the community manager at the OTM, who will be moderating the questions for our presenter. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few important details with you. The hashtag for the, summer it, for the summit is OTM Summit 20, OTM Summit 20. We are live tweeting our session, so please join us on Twitter at, at open underscore textbooks. This webinar is being recorded. For that reason, uh, you've been muted, and the video and transcriptions will be posted on the Open Textbook Network YouTube channel after the summit has concluded. The last several minutes of today's session will be for questions, but feel free to add your questions to the chat at any time. Uh, to submit a question for the presenters, just do so by using the chat feature in Zoom. We welcome your participation, uh, but note that due to time constraints, we may or may not be able to address all the comments submitted in the chat. We're committed to providing a friendly, safe, and welcoming environment for all attendees. You can learn more about our community norms at z.umn.edu slash summit community norms. Please join us in creating a safe and constructive space. So now, please join me in welcoming today's presenter. Rebel Cummings Sauls has served as the Director of Digital Services and Open Educational Resources for the Florida Academic Library uh, Services Cooperative. Ms. Cummings Sauls has more than 10 years of experience in higher education with over six years in academic research libraries. Prior to her appointment with the Florida Academic Library Services Cooperative, she served as the director of the Center for the Advancement of Digital Scholarship for Hale Library at Kansas State University. Prior to her appointment to Kansas State, Kansas State in 2015, she served more than three years as library operations coordinator for the Tampa Library at the University of South Florida. And with that, I'll hand it off to you, Rebel. Rebel, are you there? Okay, okay. I'm going to start speaking now. I hope you can hear me and hear me clearly. If not, um, please do let me know in the chat. I was having a little trouble with David's um, introduction and hearing that. So, okay, great. Um, so, welcome. And today you are here for strategies for engaging faculty in open initiatives. So, um, I welcome you all and thank you for having me. Um, so, welcome. Um, today I want to jump into the um, agenda and um, just review this again before we start. So, um, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But what if faculty don't know that the water is there or you're there to lead them? Attendees for this session will not only learn ways to help faculty find the open water, but hopefully entice them to take a sip. We will review a wide range of approaches that can scale, and you can decide to incorporate one or all into your local program. And I'm guessing you I'm hoping you can see my slides because it shows you can so um, the first thing I want to tell you is um, don't go alone so even though you may be sitting alone 
um, at your home listening to this or even as you go back to the office, you may feel that you are alone in this um, efforts on your campus. I want to um, tell you today that you're not alone. Um, as you can see with the participants here today, um, that there are several people around the state and nation who are interested in this topic as well and are here to communicate and support you in those efforts. So. Um, don't go alone. So the first thing I want to start with is building your web. And I've added some resources um, into the slides so you'll be able to see those. Um, so you can see those later um, when those are shared. But the first step is to assemble allies. So um, you're going to look around and look at your campus and see who are um, who are what who is currently supporting faculty on campus um, how are they supporting them what services and products are being offered to faculty and where are those um, where are those located at um, you want to look at your current structure of your institution again looking at the um, current organization so that might even mean pulling out those org charts going into your um, campus structure and looking at which departments are connected, who reports to who, and seeing what services and divisions and departments you actually have on your campus. So that's a great way um, to start to um, make those connections. And as you um, look at these current structures and you start to assemble your allies, hopefully you will begin to see the bridges and the connections between these um, partners, divisions, and departments on campuses, and people even. So maybe your own personal connections and where you have people. If you do see connections and where those bridges are, you want to identify those. You want to go ahead and lay those out and say, these are bridges, these are bridges that exist. These are pathways that we already have for faculty engagement. Other ways you want to look at what are bridges that need to be built. So which bridges are there that you need to connect to. So there may be connections between a department and a and a division on campus that maybe you need to intersect with as well. So how do you, you need to mark that right make that connection on your actual web and show that this is one that needs to still be built. Um, and what I'm telling you here is that not to do this in your head. I want you to actually draw this out and and um, or either manually or in a digital form, whichever you work better with and make this web map right. I want you to put down people departments list names if you have them if you don't um, make an effort to find out and identify who those people are and um, and where they're located and how you can connect with them. Also, I want to encourage you to look at state and national. So beyond your local environment, um, as you are here today, you have the Open Textbook Network. Um, you have several um, state and national resources and communities that are there for you. Um, others that I'm going to just um, try to name off the top of my head would be SPARC, Open Ed Global, which CC OER, you have Creative Commons, you have a bunch of open source community partners as well. Um, the communities that build the open source software as well as some vendors um, and partners there who help support those can also be um, great. Um, members of your web and your community as you go forward. So, oops, sorry. Um, the next thing I want to ask you to do is to do a scan. And with this, I want you to do an environmental scan and there are different pieces of that. So we're gonna overview some of those pieces here. So um, here, I want you to think not just what is presently going on. So you're gonna look and see um, what activities surround open education or textbook affordability at your institution, but also what has happened in the past. So one of, um, one of the important things that I discovered at K-State is that we had, you know, missed a whole department that had been actively working in OER um, when we first started our communications out on campus. And had I 
done a past scan as well as the present scan, I would know that they had um, actively communicated that out maybe only once to the community, but had I done that scan, I would have been able to find that. I wouldn't have been able to engage them and there would, and I probably could have um, prevented some of those um, misconnections and miscommunication opportunities that um, we had in the beginning, sorry. Um, I also want to ask you to look um, externally. You might automatically think I'm going to go to Google and do a Google search, um, but I want to um, kind of push you beyond that um, to do advanced searches. So, you know, use your um, Boolean um, search techniques and I'm sorry, I keep clicking on the slide. Um, so use your um, search techniques, do those advanced searches and dig into that, but not only um, a Google search, but what are other areas that you can look at? So indexes for open access um, journals and books and look at those, see what are connections to your campus. Um, also, I would encourage you to do internal scans. So looking at your own website, often um, we found that the internal website is actually not crawled and indexed by Google. So if you're just doing external searches, you're not finding a lot of that rich um, internal information um, and could be missing um, some of those connections, again, and collaboration opportunities for engagement. Um, I also want to um, encourage you to look at your own local catalog and the um, webcat for any potential um, author publications of open textbooks um, that may have been from faculty at your institution. We also want you to do a scan for peer and aspirational. So I would um, I would suggest that you select one to five or six um, peer and aspira aspirational, both in each column um, of institutions who um, you look at and you say, okay, um, these are ones that we um, have recognized as peer institutions for some reason. Um, usually this is done at a, at a university or college level. Um, and then you may also want to choose some aspirational institutions to compare yourself to. And these may not be ones that you would compare for um, normal um, university and college things. You might want to be looking specifically at their open and affordable textbook programs and looking at those and seeing um, how are they structured. You want to look at those and almost do like many case studies on each of the institutions that you choose. And this can help you also um, to create a list of um, what I call not to do. So pulling together um, your partners and looking critically at your peer and aspirational um, institutions is often a way where you can say, oh, well, I don't like this, you know, whatever, you know, I don't like the wording of this, or I don't like the, there's too much information here, or there's too little information here, whatever it is, start to make that list of what your partners and your stakeholders are saying when they're looking at their peer and aspirationals, document that, and that will help you kind of, um, also come up with a list of things that you really like because usually when you're looking you're like oh well they did this very well so let's highlight that let's see how we can incorporate that into our local programming those are great ways to kind of um, one of the things that many of you will find when you meet me at an event or conference I will often say tell me one of the best things that you've done lately at your institution because I'm going to take it and steal it and take it back to my institution so um, and that's what I'm kind of encouraging you to do here is um, look at the pitfalls that others have already fallen into and look at the um, benefits of engaging, you know, the ways that they've engaged their faculty and then copy those that worked well and try to stay away from those that did not work well. Another thing that's really important to your scan and one of the things that you might start with or end with is the cultural and climate checks. So one of the thing, ways that you can do this um, is just by um, looking at common or, or repeated keywords or keyword phrases that are used in marketing and in speech deliveries by um, your faculty or admin. So um, with that are directed for faculty engagement. So if they're using common words like 
um, global knowledge bank. You might want to incorporate that into your um, into your efforts of engagement. If they're thinking more about um, local impact, you're going to want to maybe um, look at your wording and see. Uh, maybe you want to remove you know, information that targets more of global and, you know, incorporate more of that local um, language and local impact, local stories. So um, culture and climate check is really important for in that engagement piece, because if you're engaging them in a different, um, in a different uh, manner than they're, you know, wanting to be received, then that could be um, offline. Off also, if you're um, using uh, the same kind of keywords or engagement strategies that admin is using or some that they're responding well to, then that might also be a way for them to say, oh, well, this is a way that it connects with a message that I'm already seeing on campus. So um, again, don't go it alone. Um, why do you not, you can't go it alone? So you need partners. Um, so look now at your current connections. Who do you already know? Who are your friends? Who are your friends with benefits? Who are, you know, where are um, people that report to you or report through you or, or somehow lean through your services or products in order to get their job done? So m document those connections and um, and list them out. Um, another important step in, with partners, um, and I'm sorry, I should explain the images on the first. So the, uh, the left um, side is all starting line and the right side are for those of you who had a Red Bull or maybe more um, further into your program. So I'm gonna start with the left side and then work into the, to the right. So I want you to start by listening and learning. This is what I did, you know, find your commonalities. Um, you, um, it's hard to find commonalities by telling people what you want. Um, so the first thing I do is I go, I listen, I learn about them, I learn about how we could possibly connect and how we could support each other going forward. Um, something that you've heard maybe Sarah speak of is the power of three. So just finding three, maybe three new connections, you know, not trying to um, hit out to the whole world, but find three people that you can really connect with well with um, and, sh and engage with. Um, also looking at the shared services and products on campuses. So who are already engaging faculty on your campuses? What, um, what are those services? What are those products? And do any of those relate to open education, textbook affordability, and that could be on multiple layers with either adoption, adaption, creation, or delivery? Um, another thing that I did with my partners is um, meet with them, um, communicate regularly. So I actually scheduled um, semesterly meetings with the shared services and products. So those areas that I identified that also were actively engaging faculty in the ways that I wanted to engage faculty, um, I said, hey, can we meet um, start just 15 minutes, you know, for that listen and learn intro. And then um, once they, once I got a foot in the door, say, hey, you know, this was a really excellent meeting. Can we, do you mind if we meet again next semester um, towards the end or beginning or middle, you know, whatever works best for you and pick a time and go ahead and get that locked into your account, into their calendars. The earlier you can get locked into the calendars, um, the easier it is to keep that consistent meeting as well. So after you've started a little bit with your partners, you want to um, build on those partnerships, right? So you want to go from your connections to your connections connections. So um, find out who they know, who do they um, trust on campus, who do they speak with, who do they partner with? Can you also engage with those people in order to engage the audience, the faculty audience that you're trying to target? You're going to move from a listen and learn stage into an ask and explore. So by this time, hopefully you know a little bit about the partner. You know how you may work together. You've had some conversations before. You have some shared commonalities and understanding. So this is a way for you to say, okay, well now um, I've identified this or hopefully as you will, may find um, as I did, they will ask actually start the ask and explore so they can say hey you know we've talked about this area here do you think we could do 
law? And I say, yes, that's an excellent idea. Thank you, <laughs> you know, and, and jump on board. So um, this also might be a time um, after you've established connections to start thinking about what new services or products might be needed on your campus in order to support the faculty, um, in order to have successful OER um, creation and adoption. This also is the time to actively seek new opportunities. So after you've grown and you've made solid connections um, with those who you know and know well, um, you wanna start to seek out new opportunities. So you've done this great work. You probably have a great program. So one of the things I wanna tell you to do is go tell it, go tell it, right? I've heard you, sure, I did the dot, dot, dot because I'm sure you've heard a song similar to this before. Um, but go tell it on the mountain, go tell it on the rooftops, go tell it everywhere, right? Um, but one of the things that I did um, with the promo or promotion and marketing and branding is create an actual branding. So create a logo or um, symbol that faculty, every time they see it, they instantly think, oh, this is a connection to open, this is a connection to affordable. You want to start by working within your um, your area communication and marketing channels. So um, if you're in the library, work within the library communication and marketing channels. If you're instructional designers, you'll work within those channels. Um, add content to your site page. So um, you often will be doing great things, but then fail to add it even to your own site page. So don't forget um, to add that information there. Um, talk about what you're doing. And um, if you don't have a page, add a page um, about your work. And also try to incorporate it into your larger unit or department's page. See if there's um, website space or um, um, connections that you might be able to make with different departments um, uh, within your area or college that might be able to support your efforts. Um, also look at existing communication and marketing items. So um, at the University of South Florida, when I was there, um, it was really hard to get new marketing um, content. So I said, okay, what am I gonna do? I looked around, looked around, and then finally I found um, the one marketing um, object that the library did every year. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is the thing that I know they're gonna spend dollars on. They're gonna repeat this process. So. Um, learn, I learned about that process and how I might be able to just get one little bullet line added um, into that um, existing communication and marketing. And then once people know about you and you're, you've kind of worked the, through these ex existing communication channels, um, you can start to work um, in a larger arena. So work um, outside of your um, local library or local institution or your local department and work within the institutional communication channels. Often um, this may require going through a level of supervisory um, approval in order to get those submitted or even dean or department level approval. Um, but hopefully you've built your program up and you have that support and they would be willing to um, submit that information there. So um, work on those. You want to work on um, creating um, stories though. Stories have impact. So um, find out what are the stories, what is happening on your on your campus so you can repeat those in your communication and marketing. Um, adding content into the institutional pages itself. So identifying where are, um, what are um, pages outside of your area where it might be good to link this information. So um, are there faculty um, driven website pages at the institution level where you might be able to incorporate this information? If yes, who are the ones that control that and how do you work with them in order to get your information incorporated into that as well? Also the same thing that I did with a library point of view, you can look at existing communication and marketing items that exist on the campus and think how you can work to um, get incorporated into those. Um, several of you who have um, grown your programs to have um, pathways or degree um, or working towards degree, OER degrees or zero textbook cost degrees. Um, this can be a great way to incorporate that into the larger institutional communication and marketing. Um, there may be other ways with textbook affordability um, um, 
angles that are often important for federal that you can incorporate your open education um, resource work. And then um, as you grow, you can start to request new promo items. So um, whatever um, you may think of, um, one of the things that we have done in the past and that was sparked by OpenStax uh, was actually um, having USBs with um, textbooks um, for a certain discipline and have those there so that I could hand those to faculty and say, here are some textbooks that you can look at. Um, you just have to pop it into your computer and pull them up and look at it. They don't have to go and do that search on the internet um, in order to find that. Um, so while this had started as student engagement, I do find that um, ICON and ICON use through the registration and course scheduling can also be um, great for um, faculty engagement. Um, we had faculty as partners, so they were with us and throughout this whole process, um, but faculty may also need to be engaged to be a part of the approval process, depending on your campus and your campus structure. Um, they may want to have a say in the design. Um, they may um, have strong feelings about the implementation. Um, hopefully you will have, um, as we did at K-State, strong admin support for that as well. Um, and also communicating this out um, to them is a way to engage them. So having them say, oh, okay, well, when we added it at K-State, they were like, how do I, and we communicated that we had a zero cost, um, I, you know, we had an open alternative textbook icon at K-State, but they communicated back with us after that communication, how do we get this icon added to my course? I'm using, you know, an open or affordable resource, so. Also, um, encouraging you all to just show up. Um, one way to engage faculty is to be there um, and to be who you are. Um, just be open and honest, um, be upfront. It's okay to have limitations. It's okay to recognize challenges. And um, it's okay to say, I can't do that for you. Um, but this is where the next one that comes in is be a connector. So hopefully you know your campus by now, you know the services and products that are available to your faculty and you can be that connector. You can say, you know, I can't help you with the learning management system, but blah, 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 Todd at IT, at IT is the perfect partner for you to work with on this stage of the process. Um, you can show off your uniqueness. I'm sure many of you have unique talents or um, skills or knowledge that you bring to the table that your other partners do not. Um, and I just encourage you to show that off when you have the opportunity. Um, attend meetings. It's hard to um, be chosen or be able to say, hey, I can help with that if you're not showing up and attending those meetings and actually being an active listener. Um, even if you aren't um, on the topic or um, one of the um, highlights for the meetings, it's important to show up, it's important to attend, and it's important to have that active listening because you never know when an opportunity um, will arise. So um, attend those meetings. Um, one of the things that I like to say has become a habit. Um, you want to be you want to be a part of the rituals that are on campus. You want people to um, um, be use you as the connector, right? You want um, when things come up, you want it to be so habitual in people's mind that they say, "Oh, you should reach out to our representative at the library or the ID." instructional design unit that can help you with this open educational resource issue. Um, so to engage, um, many of you who are um, uh, um, introverts will have to um, put that extrovert skin on and put yourself out there. Um, you're going to have to get into the conversations. You're going to have to, like I said, attend the meetings, but not just attend. You're going to have to, you know, when that opportunity arises, you're going to have to raise your hand and be willing to say, hey, I can share, I can help, and this is how I can help. Um, 
So um, put yourself out there. It's okay. Um, you'll be surprised um, the reception you'll get. I think people will like, um, you're always, especially when you're willing to help, they're always willing to listen, right? So, um, and don't reinvent the will. You know, it's okay to um, use um, what others have used in order to support what you're doing. Okay, so we're going to move into some stakeholder strategies because by this point, hopefully, you have either identified or have a plan to identify stakeholders on your campus. So I'm just going to go through um, a few of the strategies that I've used with um, engaging to engage faculty with these different stakeholders. So again, we're going to start on the left with the starting line, and the right will be like the Red Bull. Um, those who want to take it to another notch. Um, so with admin, it's important to just for them to have an awareness. Um, so it's important for them when someone says, oh, we're doing open alternative or open uh, textbook network um, faculty workshop on their campus, your, our campus for them to say who? Um, that's not great, right? So we want them to have an awareness for, and they, and they may not be able to say, oh yeah, they run the open textbook library that has over, what, 700 books in it. They may not have that level of awareness, but they shouldn't be questioning who or why or what you're doing on campus. They should have a level of awareness of what is going on so that when faculty say, did you know about this to an admin, they can say, yeah, I know, yeah, I know about that, uh-huh. Um, you also wanna make sure that they know the main highlights. And when I say main, I mean main, like one to three highlights. Um, admin, admin levels, they're not gonna remember anything more than that. They have so many people coming at them with so many things. Um, this is also true for student government um, association leaders, um, but really stick to those main highlights. What are, if they had to repeat something out of their mouth, what is the one thing that you would want them to be able to re regurgitate back to an audience and make sure um, that they know that. They also, um, twofold, they can help you identify the influencers for faculty. So they may be able to tell you, you know what, um, the the deans and the department heads of that of the of this university or this college if they say something it everybody is going to listen to them and then another university or college they may say you know what if they're if the research and strategic office says this is a great idea everybody in the whole university is going to your college is going to be doing it so um, they can help you identify influencers and they can also um, you want to be identifying the influencers for admin so that you can help um, um, help th through their influencers push that message and that awareness level to them as well and then kicking it up a notch, you can actually turn admin into advocacies and, and um, I would say at the sponsor level so that they're aware of it, they have the main highlights and they can actually actively talk about um, your program and some of the conversations that are happening on campus. Um, you want them to be able to actually receive your full report and hopefully read it. So you want to um, have that uh, level of engagement with them um, where they would actually know what's happening in that because if they are apt to receive that and um, and have it then the faculty then they usually have that um, put out to the faculty in some way so that engagement um, for the at the admin pushing that out to them and the admin also may also have tools for faculty engagement that you may not be aware of they may have hidden so working with them to find out what those admin tools are and how you can use those to engage faculty Moving on, we want to move to students. Um, this is a great stakeholder to work with, um, specifically starting at the student government um, level. The student government leaders are great um, to, um, again, at least be sponsors or have an awareness or advocacy for um, your program and your efforts. You want them to at least um, know that what you're doing on campus, um, even if they are not running um, maybe for a platform for that. Um, one of the things that you can get state students to do that sometimes um, gets faculty attention is a statement of support. So the students can actually um, put out a statement of support for open and alternative or open educational resources. Um, and also 
inviting the students to be part of the textbook grant review process turned out to be a faculty engagement um, tool. So them seeing that students were engaged in that process helped them to have trust, I think, in that process. Um, also going past student governments, there's clubs and more. So many times like the graduate office or honors office on your campus will have a list of those. So work with them to reach out to those. Um, oftentimes they have a faculty partner who or faculty mentor for each of those clubs. So you can um, engage at that level through those clubs with those faculty. Um, students can then go past a statement of support and pass the resolution. Um, so Sometimes this can have a, a bigger bite with faculty and actually um, um, maybe even if it's just a checkbox on their form that they go through for their course and that says that they have to say they've considered an open um, educational resources before they choose a commercial textbook. Something of that stance could be like a resolution that a student could do that could um, help with faculty engagement because that's another form that the faculty do in a habitual ritual process every semester they're having to complete that so it's something that they're touching every every year. Um, the student government may also run on a stance or a strategy um, for open educational resources. So we had this happen at K-State and happen on multiple years actually and one um, of the student government leaders ran um, one on that open um, textbook platform. So that was huge because that whole time of their leadership, they were actively engaging the faculty and leadership on um, encouraging the use of open educational resources. And you can also um, have student direct faculty, student direct to faculty engagement and outreach. So they can personally reach out to their faculty members and ask them to use open educational resources. So as a library, um, if these aren't, if this is not where you work or if this is where you're located, um, these can be great stakeholders um, for engaging faculty. So one of the things that they can do is collect data on um, the textbooks, they can collect data on the student um, um, questions at the circulation desk. How many students even come and ask, do you have my textbook here? Um, they can add markings into the catalog. So we, um, as the library um, admin, control the catalog that you know supports this. So you can add a marking into the library catalog that shows what is an open educational resource. Um, you um, can ask the library to curate textbook and OA um, open access collection. So um, these can be um, right. Uh, license resources that are licensed for use in your classroom. Um, you may also have um, ser services within the library that can kind of be pulled under an umbrella or together in order to support um, open education um, and the adoption. So you may have publishing services in the library. You may have copyright services in the library. You may have um, loca resource location services in the library. Some of these services might be able to pull, be pulled together and market it as an umbrella service um, to engage the faculty. A simple thing that many of us do is just providing that LibGuide or web page. So um, you'll find um, several examples of those across the nation. So you could also um, have a LibGuide that's specifically geared um, to faculty um, for faculty engagement. And I just have to say, um, we had the same information on our library page and our web page, our open alternative page, but it wasn't until we pulled that information out to a tab that said for faculty. <laughs> Did we some suddenly start to get faculty engagement through that um, tab? So we had a four student tab and we had a four faculty tab and that really helped with that faculty engagement. And I'm not, it was the same exact information we had on the web page before, but when we specifically labeled it for faculty engagement, somehow that really drove them to that page and and had them reading that and communicating back information off of that page. So that was great. Um, you also have liaisons. Many of these um, attend department meetings. So they have direct engagement with faculty. The faculty are coming to them 
looking for resources for their personal faculty research, they can also use that as an opportunity to engage them in using an open educational resource in their courses. You can add a facet. So many of you in the library land know what that means, but basically that's a search um, limiter for um, the markings that we've put in the catalog already. So um, hopefully you've marked a lot of those textbooks and now you can add a limiter so that the faculty or the students can go in and say, okay, I want to look at only open educational resources and limit all their resource, all the search resorts to those that they know they can use in the classroom. You can also pull those CERC reports. So you have um, circulation of those open access um, textbooks and resources, you can pull that information. We did at K-State, we pulled it and we sent it to the faculty and we used that as a faculty engagement tool. We said, hey, did you know 464 of your students um, checked out your textbook from the textbook reserve last year? Here's a link to our open alternative textbook grant program where you can apply for a grant in order to convert your course to a free um, textbook Textbook instead of the commercial textbook you're using. So this showed the faculty that there was a need for that conversion as well. So they could see, oh, it wasn't just um, two people went to the library and used my textbook. They can say, oh, well, I only had like 30 kids in my class. So if I had 464 checkouts and only 30 kids, that meant that at least some of them were going back multiple times to use that resource. And, you know, and how much of that percentage and, you know, and it at least gets their wheels thinking of, you know, can I do this and should I do this? Um, and maybe here's a reason why you should do that. Um, several of us in the library also help to publish textbooks. So you may actually have a publishing service. Your library may have a press. Um, you can use that press to actually publish their resources. Um, and that's a great way to engage the faculty um, who may not um, be looking to pick up, which um, sounds odd, they may not be looking to adopt or adapt. Um, several of faculty members want to actually create. So this may be a great way to engage those faculty. Um, you can also do resource location. Um, you may ask why I put this on the Red Bull side and not the starting line side, um, because I, um, I just, I find this can be overwhelming, especially for those who are just starting to build your program or may not have all of those partners and connections and those bridges built it built and those resources identified that can help support the faculty. Um, this may be one where you're kind of jumping off into the deep end before you're ready to swim. So that's why I put it onto the Red Bull side because um, before you really start to promote that resource location as an engagement tool for the faculty, you wanna make sure that you're prepared for that. You wanna make sure that your liaisons and members of your library um, staff, your circulation, you know, we had to do student engagement um, because we had students working at the front desk. So there was a lot of engagement that had to happen before we could really promote, hey, we could actually help you find um, a resource for that class. Um, plus, as um, Dave and Tanya and Sarah said, you know, it's up to the faculty to kind of decide that content. So um, sometimes this might be a last step for um, well, they may not be going out there and finding that content on their own. So this may be a way to encourage them to at least take a look. And then um, you can have student requests um, to faculty. So we um, had little cards printed out actually at the library. So when a student came to the library circulation desk and they said, oh, I want to um, get a textbook and we didn't have it on textbook reserve, we would be able to give that card to the student and say, you know, you can take this to the faculty member. Um, you, this, then that way it was anonymous as well. So the student could either hand it to the faculty if they wanted to be brave and just, you know, give the card to the faculty or they could leave it on their desk in the class or on, you know, on the, on the faculty's desk or put it in the faculty's um, mailbox. And basically um, that request let the faculty know that they had a student in their classroom who was in need for the resource and did not have access to it. So it was a way um, for the for another engagement level just for the faculty to be aware that there is a student in need in that particular course.
and then LMS integration. So this can be a great way to um, incorporate with the um, faculty and engage them. You can actually put that libguide that you created directly into their course if you can get that. Working with the faculty, you want to invite the faculty potentially to serve or present um, so they can serve on as a partner for your program or they can present about what they've done. This faculty as well can put out a statement of support. Um, as you know, faculty can do reviews, so that's a great way of engagement. I'm not going to go too far into that. Um, I do want to encourage you to embrace your challengers. You may want to run away from faculty who have challenged what your your message or your um, um, your program on campus, but I would like to encourage you to embrace those. They can often, um, if you can overcome the challenges that they perceive on your local campus, they can often be the loudest mouthpiece and tool for engagement on your campus going forward. You also want to train and educate, and I'll hit a little bit on that. Um, University of South Florida is now doing report cards for their faculty, so they're actually um, sending their faculty a report card and it grades them based on their textbook efforts. Um, so that's a really great engagement pop, um, piece. Uh, you can encourage the faculty to do a faculty senate policy so they can actually make a statement themselves. Um, other faculty can encourage other faculty so they can be faculty mentors. Faculty can share their stories of adoption. This can be a powerful piece um, to encourage other faculty if they can see how it's done and see how it was um, actually incorporated into the class. Um, it's a way that they can engage. Um, they can be partners and leaders on your campus. So faculty engaging other faculty has been one of the biggest and at K-State was the biggest um, drawer for, for faculty to engage in our process. They can also do research and with that do state and national presentations. So I'm going to cover a little bit about enticement. Enticement um, grants is obviously, you know, money talks and you can pay for grants to do several things. They can do for reviews, just for adoptions, adaptions, or creations. Um, something that we've started to think about now um, is new additions, creating um, grants for those new additions. And we've also seen grants go for um, research in open education and presenting that out um, to their discipline or to an open education conference. Um, okay, I'm going to try to wrap up here. Uh, fees is another way that you can actually engage faculty. So you want to look at current fees. Um, are there fees that are already on campus that might be used to support your program and your faculty engagement process? Um, there may also be grant programs with those fees. So we had a student fee at K-State and they actually basically um, granted that money out to um, different initiatives on campus and so we were able to apply for that grant funding there. Um, you want to review the rules for your um, fees on your campus and your state and what those rules are, um, who has had any kind of fees um, placed in the in the past and how were those um, done and one and the reason why I bring this up is because we were able to do an OER um, open alternative program per credit course credit or not per credit ours was per course but some have done per credit um, fees and that has led to sustainability and for K-State I say that because um, we got um, basically 10% of the funding back into a pot that we were able to grant um, funds for new course conversions. The other 90% went to the department and we only told them to use it as their policies, as the university policies had governed. And um, it, you know, so it kept courses with open education resources. So courses that might have tried out an open education resource and then maybe flipped back to a commercial because a new faculty member maybe came in or it was a TA or or something happened, it encouraged that faculty member to make a stronger look at that um, that program, especially in the um, in budget 
you know, tensions and times when the when that faculty member is able to support the department through the use of these resources. And that can be then used to um, better those courses and make that student engagement um, richer and more fulfilling. So one of the departments at K State said the first thing they were going to buy was this microscope these students kept saying they didn't have access to because it was the one thing they needed in order to get jobs. And so they were going to be able to help their students um, get jobs. So it was a way for them. Um, research tenure promotion, I linked to a guide there, but basically here you can publish and present. The, you can do course research um, to engage your faculty. You want to highlight their success. You want to do awards and events. Um, we mentioned this earlier, report on the findings and the outcomes. Um, we've had some, one locally um, in Florida, add OER publishing to tenure and promotion guidelines. So having that as a direct um, statement in their tenure and promotion guidelines is great. Um, and then doing research as an institution as a whole. So if you have that student marker, that icon, that can be a way to lead to some of that longitudinal data that you can um, start to do those institutional research. And we've also seen um, endowments and even promotions um, through open education use. So that can be a great way to engage faculty. And then training, we mentioned this a little earlier, copyright and creative commons is a great way, mainly through author rights. So engaging that faculty in taking a stance over their author rights is a great way um, to get them engaged. You've seen the faculty workshop, accessibility is a great tool. Everybody is asking about that. So learning and engaging with that and showing how um, open resources can be used there. The learning management system, uh, there's a session in this summit about learning cir circles. So if you haven't seen that or want to know more about that, I would encourage you to watch that. And the CC certificate is also linked here. So that's a great tool for engaging faculty if they're very aware of Creative Commons. And we have seen some, uh, I think Jasmine Roberts is a great example of one of those faculty members who gets highly engaged in the process um, through training and then further goes on to be, I think, a great um, promoter, um, not just locally, but nationally for our, our movement. So, um, and working on those adoption and creation tools themselves. So, and I know I ran over, I'm sorry, but um, we do have a few more time for comments and questions and I don't mind staying over. So, right. you well, have my you contact so information here. Thank you so much, Rebel. Can you hear me okay? I can now, yep. Okay, great, okay. Um, awesome, thank you so much. I just, before I, I open it up to, uh, to questions, I just want to say that I really just love your approach which is networking. I mean, that's what you've talked about most of this time was just like how to have those connections so that you can you can do what you said on one side, which is just, it allows you to be open and honest about what you can do and can't do, and then you're the connector. So anyway, I just really love that approach. So thank you so much for your comments here. I'm, I'm, I'll open it up then to questions and you have two options if you wanna ask questions. You can type the question into the chat. I will read it off, that would be great. If on the other hand, you would rather unmute yourself, I would ask you to uh, maybe raise your hand, do the little hand raising thing, um, and I will call on you so we don't have too many going on at once. I will say that um, there was one comment uh, during your presentation, Rebel, that was Amy Mom when you talked about the introvert needing to put on kind of the face of an extrovert she said, yes, just thinking that exact thing, introvert freak out, she said. Yeah, it can be hard, but it's important, I think. Um, and you don't have to do it all the time. It's just when that opportunity arises. Right. Joe, you have a question. Yeah, thank you. A uh, quick question. You had one little point about report cards with faculty. Could you clarify that or expand on it? Thank you. 
Yes, so this was not my idea, but I told Alex last week I was totally going to steal it. Um, so um, at the University of South Florida, they are putting together a report card for each faculty member. Um, so the faculty member, um, they do an excellent job in tracking um, textbook adoption there. So they're able to determine um, if the faculty reported on time their textbook selection, what faculty, what textbook selection they chose. So they are able to rate basically whether it's a commercial or open textbook and how much money that's costing the students. Um, there, um, I have to pull the report card to actually see all the assessments, but basically it runs down um, all the different factors on the textbook affordability. They take it from a textbook affordability aspect, um, but they run down all those different factors and it kind of lets the um, faculty know whether or not they're meeting the expectations of the university or not. Um, and so that's a uh, um, it's been a great tool and they incorporate that they actually I didn't add this but they um, actually have an assessment dashboard so for textbook affordability that you can go to their website and view University of South Florida the textbook affordability program tab um, and they have an, a data dashboard an assessment dashboard for textbook affordability where you can go in the department and they have this set up where the department heads can go in and actually look at their faculty's assessment and their department's assessment how they're doing where they could be doing better um, and it gives a, a lot of great information for that um, and we have to report on textbook affordability as a um, as a state so um, so that's, um, so that's one of the, been one of the drivers for that, for our state is that they actually have to report that to the BOG. Right, thank you. Uh, we have a question in the chat from Janelle Wurzberger who asks, could you say more about the little card that students can leave with the professor to let them know they can't access the books? Is it anonymous? So um, we, um, so there's two, it can be anonymous or it can, so the student can either choose to give that to the faculty um, themselves. They can choose to take that card and take it to the faculty and hand it to the faculty. Um, we also had a way where the faculty, um, all the students basically had access to the faculty's um, uh, mailboxes so and their offices so the fact so the student could go to that faculty's um, communication channel and submit that and, and there was an area there for the student to just um, write in the numbers or we would write in the numbers at the circulation desk so that their handwriting couldn't be um, picked up on by the professor, we would write in the course number and they could just drop it either into their door, you know, through their door slot when the faculty wasn't there or into their mailbox. Um, and, or um, we also started to, um, when, you know, we, we honestly didn't get enough of the students picking up the cards for us to have a high enough level of faculty engagement there that we wanted. So our CERC desk took it to one step further and they started emailing the faculty member, which I you know, I set up, a pro, we set it up together, but basically when the student came up, regardless of whether or not they took the card, we sent an anonymous notification to the faculty member and let them know you had a student who was looking for for resources for your course and did not have the ability to to have those so um, so that and that did that was a great um, engagement tool thank you but some of the students were bold they just walked right up to the faculty and they just said you know I'm gonna <laughs> hand and I just handed it right to them you know they need to know you know who you know basically they were like they need to know that you know i'm a i'm a person and that this isn't just being dropped in there you know whatever by some you know that i'm you know and that i have real needs and i'm you know so do you know rebel what kind of response they got from instructors did you, did you ever hear back about that so I know that we had some conversions based on it. So I didn't hear um, all the things, but I do know that we had course conversions based on um, those those engagements through that CERC process. Um, we had faculty who, who actively said, you know, I got this and I, 
I started thinking, wow, you know, this many students, you know, or I really have a need. And um, yeah, another one that I didn't put on here was um, data that we had actually gotten from our student um, um, advisory group. They do an exit survey for the students and pulling student data from that. So we were able to pull in that one out of every four students at an ag university struggle to feed themselves at least once a week. Um, mm -hmm. We were able to pull that the highest need was a, a short term $400 loan for three months in order and the stated reason was so that they could get to the next semester. So we were able to show the faculty that, you know, their efforts meant the students were enrolling in the next semester. Okay, thank you. I think we are at time. Rebel, I want to at thank time. you so much again. Yep, thank you. Um, we really appreciate your sharing your expertise with us today. And audience, thank you for joining us. And we want to remind you that today's webinar has been recorded and will shared in the coming weeks. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel to receive a notification if you want to when it's up. Uh, slides will also be linked as well. Uh, the session also is live tweeted, so feel free to check out the summit hashtag OTN Summit 20. Keep the conversation going. Uh, and if you're an OTN member, you can also uh, continue the conversation in our OTN and Google group. So thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. Take care. <laughs>